joining us today. I know it's probably a really good time to be inside in the air conditioning. <laughs> July is in full swing for sure. I hope everyone had a wonderful and safe fourth. Great show up for you today. As always, our first guest today is David Reinprecht, who is a nutritionist and personal trainer. He's here to share his personal success story and fill us in on some surprising differences between supplements. It's information that may shock you, so you're going to want to make sure you stick around for that. After that, we'll have Brandon Wecker from High Desert Youth Football. The sign-ups are underway. It is time to get all excited about the next football season. And if you've got a child age 8 through 14, you're going to want to get signed up. The league starts July 24th. So Brandon will be in the studio a little bit later to fill us in on all the details. And it's the 26th annual Corn Fest. 26 years of the most amazing sweet corn out of Hauser and Hauser Farms. That's going to be celebrated on July 14th and 15th in beautiful downtown Camp Verde. With us today we'll have Nikki Miller and Julie Scott from Camp Verde Promotions. They're going to tell us all about the details this year and the fun things they're going to be having, contests and music and there's prizes and competitions and all kinds of great fun stuff in downtown beautiful Camp Verde. Then we'll go over to Tuzagut National Monument. We'll hang out in the museum with experimental archaeologists archaeologist Zach Krasija. He's the owner of Echoes from the Past School of Ancient Technology. Now Zach will be giving highly informative talks and presentations on the third Saturday of every month at Tuzagut National Monument. Topics will be ranging from bead making, the use of yucca agave and cotton textiles, flint napping, arrow fletching, all kinds of interesting and exciting things. You won't want to miss a single one of these every third Saturday. Then at the end of our show, we'll have Don Witcher today, a singer-songwriter whose music ranges from Americana to alternative country to low-down blues, gritty folk rock with a side of swampabilly. Everybody needs a little side of swampabilly in their life. Well, Don will be here with his lap steel to entertain us. So make sure you stick around with us for the rest of the day. And we're going to go ahead and get started with our first guest today, Mr. David Reinprecht. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, tell us your story. You have a very interesting story as far as how you got involved in nutrition and being a personal trainer. So where did that start? Yeah, that was a little funny story. Um, I'm from Europe, from Austria, from a s very small town. I'm, uh, I mean, we're not even 2,000 people in our town, so it's mm -hmm. very tiny. It's actually close where Arnold Schwarzenegger is from. That's where we have the funny accent. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was, about, um, I was about 11 years old. You know, that's the time where the testosterone is kicking in and you start liking girls. And uh, I was, you know, pretty shy back then. And, uh, but, you know, it, it got to a point where I couldn't help it no more. And there was this one girl. I really liked a lot and, uh, you know, I tried to figure out what's the best way to approach her. And uh, so I decided to, you know, write a little note and uh, I was hiding it. And, but of course, you know, uh, little kids are a little mean, as you know. Mm. And uh, one of my best friends, uh, he uh, exposed me and he gave it to her. And, uh, yeah, I remember it was, um, hmm. well, she came up to me with the little note and she looked at me. She goes, did you write this? And I looked at her and I was like, um, I didn't even know what to say, you know, because <laughs> I, I didn't know what, how, how, how she would react. <laughs> and, well, I didn't have much to say anyways. And she looked at me and she said, well, if that's from you, I mean, look at you. Do you think I go with you? You're fat. <laughs> mm, ouch. Ouch, yeah. yeah. So that was like a, a Mike Tyson punch in my face yeah. and left and right and slap and wow. out yeah, that was painful yeah and but you know something uh, great happened out of that because I lost that was in kilograms so if in pounds it was, I, I lost about 28 pounds wow. in uh, less than two weeks whoa so when she said that to me my whole life had a huge shift hmm. I was this little kid who liked to eat chocolate, you know, gummy bears and all that stuff. And from one day to the next, I wanted to know everything about nutrition, hmm. how to build my perfect body, what's happening internally, you know, what food to eat and what to drink, you know, I, I wanted hmm. to know everything. Hmm. So to make a long story short, um, I became a, a nutritionist, I went to college, I became a, a fitness trainer. I uh, went to the army for one and a half years. I went to, uh, 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 what's it called, if you translate it, in, in Europe, in Austria, um, the sport or sports academy mm. uh, for two years. 
And uh, yeah, so when it comes to sports, nutrition, training, supplementations, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm very knowledgeable when it comes to that. And <laughs> thanks to her, <laughs> yeah. you know, my career was born as a nutritionist. And uh, yeah, that was about, that's how it happened. Sure, I mean, that's an impressive way to start. For sure, <laughs> I mean, and, and good for you for acknowledging, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. I mean, that happens in our lives. And now look at you, you're extremely successful. And you're sharing your knowledge with other people, which is wonderful when you're able to take that gift and share it with other people and help other people's lives. I mean, as a, as a personal trainer, you know, just helping people get stronger. That's amazing. And helping people with nutrition. Nutrition is terribly misunderstood, isn't it? It's yeah. just this big old open thing and they tell you what you can eat and what you can't eat and most of it's lies anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's when it comes to nutrition, um, I've seen it all over the years and I'm, I'm doing this for 20 years now. And you know, people are so focused on the label, you know, mm -hmm. oh, it's the, uh, the, the uh, Atkins diet or uh, South Beach diet. I mean, it's, you know, they all have the, the fancy labels, you know, but really what's happening is there's only one way the body can lose fat and, you know, and, and build muscles. So, and there's no way around it. You know, if you eat sugar and yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people eat sugar without even knowing consciously or unconsciously because sugar is almost in everything, you know, mm -hmm. especially here in the United States, which is sad. And what's happening internally is, you know, if you eat sugar, you know, you have insulin resistance, your insulin goes up when the insulin is activated. That means, you know, it blocks the fat burning process. And on top of that, you know, it, it also activates insulin. Insulin, it also stores fat mm -hmm. immediately. Mm -hmm. So for the last 10 years, I was working at uh, Gold's Gym in Venice Beach, and I was working with a lot of professional athletes, bodybuilders, fitness models to get them on stage. Mm. And so I know what it takes to go on stage and be super ripped, you know. Uh, sure, dieting is 70%, uh, 30% is uh, uh, training, and of course, uh, nutrition. And sure, you know, in bodybuilding, you have to know about that. Unfortunately, that's part of the game. You also have to know about steroids mm. because that's all what it takes to mm. be on stage. And so I had to learn everything about that stuff. And um, yeah, and, and, and people really think, you know, it's so complicated, mm -hmm. but it's really not. Mm -hmm. When you know how the body works internally mm -hmm. and you know when to eat, and what to eat, when mm -hmm. not to eat, and you know, and you eat the, the right carbs with low glycemic index and all that stuff. I mean, we can talk about this, you know, it, it will take too long, but people think it's, it has to be complicated to be successful. And, right. and that's, I'm here to tell you, this is not the case. It's actually very simple, mm -hmm. to the point, and all my clients, and, and there's no exception unless they cheat, of course, every client is losing at least a pound mm. or you know, every day or every second day mm. with my program. Wow. And I'm not selling a diet, you know, I'm mm. not, there's no fancy marketing behind it. Right. I'm just working with, you know, with the body. With the so knowledge of the body. Yeah, exactly. Sure. That's, that's step one is to know <coughs> how your body deals with stuff. I mean, the whole sugar thing was such a shock, you know, when that goes and then fat, oh, ah, really just coming from that one piece of information about what sugar does to your body and to the fat content and what it does to the nutrition that you're taking in. Something very interesting, you know, we hear about supplementation. <coughs> People take Wow, I mean, you know, my countertop's covered with them. But there's a huge difference between one supplement to the next. Can you break that down for us on what it looks like? Uh, yes, I want to uh, I want to give you a little pre-story so that people understand how I got to this point. I was a sponsored uh, fitness model and athlete for uh, a big company. I don't want to mention the name, but uh, I learned a lot about the supplement business. I, I saw what's behind the curtain. So. And unfortunately, people think uh, the bigger the corporation, the better the product. Mm -hmm. It's actually the opposite because big corporation on the stock market, they have investors, they have, you know, 2,000 employees working for them. So they have to pay them. You know, there's a lot of expenses. And let's face it, they also have to compete with other corporations. And unfortunately, there's only one way to make more money. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, un unfortunately, you know, the product, the product itself has to suffer. Right, because cheaper they, ingredients. Yeah, cheap ingredients and um, cheap fillers. And that's, that's something <clears throat> I want to expose today because I'm sure that a lot of people have no clue. I had no clue and, and I'm taking supplements since 20 years. Right. 
And you probably only know that when you're a supplement owner, and I had to go through the process. When you're a supplement owner, and you go to a manufacturer, and you have your formulation, um, as an example, let's say vitamin C, okay? Mm -hmm. If I purchase one kilogram of vitamin C, I have the option to buy it at 65% potency up to 95%. Mm. 95% of course, the most expensive, the best potency and all that stuff. But it will never show that on the label. Right. Because hey, I purchased one kilogram of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say it I purchased it for 65% potency right. or 75% potency, no. Well, that's very frightening. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it really will never show that on the label, unfortunately. <laughs> And that's how they get away with, you know, different prices. You know? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that's also, you know, a lot of people ask themselves, how is it possible there is, you know, 20 different vitamin Cs and they all have different price ranges. Mm -hmm. Like one is $5 and one is like $35. Right. Well, now you know the answer. There you because go. It's that <coughs> simple. It's the quality of the ingredients. It's, vitamin it's C the, is not potency, vitamin C. Yeah. There's so much more involved in nutrition and supplementation. If you want some more information through David, you can go to biocorpllc.com. Great website, lots of information there. Of course, you can email, you can give him a call. Very approachable, very easy to get a hold of. <laughs> David, thank you so much for being here. We oh, can spend a whole hour talking about nutrition. It's one of my passions, too. So I really appreciate what you're doing for folks. And, and I, I obviously, you see the results right here. So how can you argue with that? <laughs> so <laughs> David Reinfeldt, thank you for being here. Appreciate well, thank you it. for having me. Don't go away because we've got lots more of the experience right after this. Q102.9 plays all the hits. Yo, what's going on? This is Trissy Drake. Ariana Grande. Maroon 5. This is Rihanna. I'm with the I'm Shawn Mendes. Hey, it's Bruno Mars. Ed Sheeran. What's up, guys? It's Justin Bieber. You're listening to The Weeknd. Start your day with Brian James in the morning. You'll get at least 10 songs in a row during your ride home with Julie Page. Zach Sang Show. Catch the Zach Sang Show weeknights 7 to midnight. And Kelly Fox weekends on your home for hit music. The Q102.9. And 104.9 in Prescott and Cottonwood. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. <laughs> Miss Lee, this is Agent Williams from the tax office. Our records show an unpaid balance on your account. If you don't pay by end of day, you'll be facing jail time. Well, the fastest way to fix this is with a prepaid debit card. Can you go get one now? Yes, and we want to clear this up. If you just buy that prepaid card, put $400 on it, then call me back and read the numbers to me. The moment they ask for a prepaid card is the moment you know something's wrong. Think before you send money. Learn more at scamawareness.org. And welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. I'm now here with Brandon Wecker, and we're going to talk about High Desert Youth Football because it's now open registration and will be starting very soon. Yep, football season's here. Football season's here already. Yep. Isn't that awesome? Yep. From one sport to another, <laughs> we just finished up baseball, so mm -hmm. now we're getting ready to move into football. No time to rest. Nope. Yep, just <laughs> nope. wipe your brow and switch your hat. That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, registration, uh, they go to the Facebook page and can download the forms from the Facebook page. Is they that can do that, or they can go to Little Daisy Motel or um, All Price Insurance, both on Main Street and Cottonwood here, mm -hmm. and pick up the, the forms, or you can drop them off there as well. Right. Um, registration's open until July 23rd. Um, right. After that, there's a $20 late fee that's added on to the $80 initial. It's $80 mm -hmm. uh, is the fee to play. And then if you wait till after the 23rd, there's a $20 late fee. So, um, but like I said, you can, yeah, you can print it off there. You can go to either the hotel or the all price insurance, pick up mm -hmm. the form, fill it mm -hmm. out and drop it off. That's where you want to drop it off at yep. either one of those places. Yep. That's a pretty easy mm -hmm. system you've developed there. I mm -hmm. thought that was great. I went on the Facebook page earlier today and saw oh, here to download that and bam, and there it is. Yeah. You know, as a, as a parent of the child in sports, you know, filling out the forms and registering for stuff can mm -hmm. be such a pain in the butt, yep. but this is very easy. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, a big help to Danica, our president. She's mm. she's done an excellent job with excellent, it. Excellent, so. Danica. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then at the time, there's birth certificate and medical physicals required mm -hmm. to play. Okay. So. Great. What are they looking for in the physical? Um, you just go for a general. If you go to, you can go to your doctor and just say they just need a general sports physical, mm -hmm. and they just do their the normal thing. You know, the vision, hearing, right. just your strength tests, things like that. Just Very make cool. sure you're fit to go and, and see what you got to work with. Yep. Yep. So, and then uh, HDYF High Desert Youth Football is going to be doing a sport, a physical, a sports physical clinic, mm -hmm. um, mid to end July. Um, if you like the Facebook page, um, the we'll, we'll keep updating on there and on when that'll be and stuff. So. Oh, well, that's really cool. Yeah. So, and then um, you know, like you said, ages six to fourteen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Mighty Mites is ages six to eight, and then minors is nine to eleven, majors is twelve to fourteen, except you can't be a freshman in high school. Okay. So if you're still in eighth grade, you can play in the majors okay. still. Well, there so, you go. Um, and then the age is determined on how old they are as of August 1st. August 1st. Yep. That's very important. I love watching the Mighty Mites. Play. Yeah. I love that. The little kids is a six. Oh my God! Yep. A six-year-old running around in a football <laughs> uniform. Nothing cuter. Yep. That's my son's. <laughs> this will be his last year. Mighty Mites. His third oh. year. So. Third year. Eight years old. Wow. Yeah. He's got the passion then. Yep. Oh yeah. There you yep. go. He loves it so. Very fun. Yeah. And then uh, practices will start uh, July 24th at mm -hmm. 5:30 at CMS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they, um, the kids only they just need cleats, shorts, and a shirt, and water. Obviously, bring plenty of water. Yeah. Um, they don't need to wear pads. They won't have pads or anything that first week. Um, and then the 28th will be the draft. And then they do a draft day party slash fundraiser. So oh. the parents have to be there. They don't make phone calls in football like they do in other leagues. They don't call all the parents. Uh. Um, so you need to be the parents need to be there on July 28th after the draft. They'll come out. And they'll announce what kids mm. are going to what team. Must be present. Uh, yep. And then, uh, like I said, there's a barbecue, and then they do water slides and stuff. So right. um, the kids that get drafted though are any new new players mm -hmm. or players that are getting moved up. Uh -huh. So like if they but if they played last year and they're staying in that same league, like for my son for example, he's he's just he's already on the Lobos. He knows that. Um, so they just stay that once they're on a team, they stay in that team. Mm -hmm throughout there until they move up to the next until and then they they'll get drafted to another team yep right oh so how fun they get yeah. to go through a draft and all that that's got to be exciting for them yeah. so and then uh, one other thing to keep in mind is it is a travel league mm -hmm. so we do a lot of traveling so be prepared yes. for that there's you travel to wickenburg salome prescott valley baghdad um, williams page um, wickenburg right so there's there's a lot of traveling um, the games are always on saturdays um, every Saturday, and then practices depend on what the coaches set. Usually three to five nights a week, depending on what mm -hmm. age you're in and stuff. And and the nights vary. You know, you could do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Thursday. It just depends. Wow. So that must be uh, quite a lot logistically mm -hmm. for you guys running that. Yeah, it's there. The, like I said, the board does an excellent job doing all that. So um, do uh, they have parent volunteers? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, my wife is on the board. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, there's a lot of other. Yeah, it's all the parents you are on board. You must need quite a few yeah, people to help you out with that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, it's a lot for sure. And then there's a, you know, then they have the big committee, which is all in Northern Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, they all meet, and so everybody works together and, and makes it happen. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a good time and a good season. Every year, I'm always impressed with how well you guys do. Yeah. So, and then the other thing coming up is the Mingus Youth Football Camp mm -hmm. um, that they do at Mingus. Coach Young puts on an excellent camp every year. It's very fun. Um, it's for the same ages, six to fourteen. It's twenty dollars per per tar participant. Wow. Um, and it's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the eighteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth. Wow, from twenty five, bucks for all that. From five thirty to wow. seven thirty at Mingus on the football field. It's wow. an excellent time. My son's done it every year, and that's good. It's fun. Okay, so it works ages the same ages as the leagues. Yes. You can go six to fourteen. Yep. Well, that's wonderful because I was going to ask, you know, how yeah. how do these kids prepare for this? I mean, yeah. they want to be their best on the field, and they want to be their best, you know, for their coaches. But where b besides at practices, where else can they work their skills? Yeah. yeah. So here's a, where a place to start, and then, as like I said, the the twenty fourth when practice starts, they call it, it's more of like a conditioning. It's mm -hmm. for the first two weeks. It's conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they got to be there. The for five nights out of that first week, okay. um, you know, they, Monday through Friday every night, um, and it's just conditioning. Just get them ready, get them prepared, because, mm -hmm. as you know, if, I mean, football is very physical, and right. I mean, when then you get the pads on and the heat and everything else, mm -hmm. it's it's a lot. So there's conditioning that needs yes. to go in before conditioning they start is a is a nice way of saying running. Yes, pretty much. Yes, <laughs> lots and lots of running. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> But you know, it's I mean that's the whole reason that we want to get kids out there and play. You know, it promotes mm -hmm. a healthy and active lifestyle. Um, they work on team building. Um, you know, 
it's uh it's it's fun it's learn yeah. how to work as a team right you know and then their families their parents and everybody they become part of that football family and mm -hmm. it's it's awesome there's nothing Absolutely. better and learning strategy on the field yep. and how to cooperate and yep. yeah, yeah problem solving multitasking yeah, yeah. excellent it's quick it's, on your feet yep it's all good stuff. Who it thought? Is. Football is this yeah. amazing microcosm of everything you need to know in life. Mm -hmm. Just play football. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. So. And I assume you played football. Um, I did not, no? actually. I actually wow. didn't. Wow. Yeah. No, I was a baseball guy. Baseball. I went out and started to play for about a week or two, and I said, I just want to play baseball year-round. Wow. And so in high school, that's what I did year-round all for all four years, and right. I, I regret it now. I, yeah. I, I wish I would have went and played. Really? Yeah. Well, hear but. that. See what Brandon just said. He says he yep. regrets not playing football. I do. So don't let that happen to your kid. <laughs> no, get them started early, too. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Get the foundation in there. Yep. And like I said, it's so cute. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, my gosh. Now, are you coaching this year? Um, I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to coach this year. I have in the past. I've been mm -hmm. an assistant coach. Um, and like I said, I love coaching, but, um, you know, I may take a year off oh, and uh, just step back and enjoy watching. Fans. and Eat a yeah. hot dog. Yep. yep. And, uh, you know, like like I said, I just finished up with baseball. You know, we, I coached mm -hmm. Little League, and then uh, we I ended up being the all-star coach for the 9 and 10-year-olds. Wow. So um, we went to all-stars, and so we just finished up. So Great. time for a little break, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, good for you. You've definitely earned it. No, thank You've you. You've definitely earned it. Well, yeah. we're looking forward to another great season. So mm -hmm. registration is now open. Do it now. Saves you 20 bucks. You don't want to be late. Yep. Uh, it's only $80. And what does that get you for the $80? Does that get you your pads and everything for the season. Wow. And uh, your, it's the registration fee and, wow. and all that. And it goes to help pay for the umpire or refs mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, field maintenance and things right. like that. Important stuff. Yep. Important stuff. So you can check out the Facebook page. They've got the forms there for you to download. You can go to the Little Daisy Mode hotel and also all price insurance you can get your forms there if you're like me and you just want to go ha you know handle some paper get that handled of course fill it out and bring mm -hmm. it back very yep. very very simple and we're almost ready to start there yeah. on july 24th yep. get your practice on yeah oh my gosh and then don't forget about the mingus football camp and mingus football camp very time. very important if they want to sign up for that how do they yes. do that um just go contact coach young at the high school mm -hmm. um 202-0165 and uh, excellent they will uh fabulous yeah. Well, thank you, Brandon. Nice. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks for you having being me. here. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great season. Oh, yeah. yeah. Should be fun. Cool. Brandon Wacker, we'll be right back, so don't go away. The Q102.9 plays all the hits. Yo, what's going on? This is Drizzy Dre. Ariana Grande. Maroon 5. This is Rihanna. I'm Adele. I'm Sean Mendes. Hey, it's Bruno Mars. Ed Sheeran. What's up, guys? It's Justin Bieber. You're listening to The Weeknd. Start your day with Brian James in the morning. You'll get at least 10 songs in a row during your ride home with Julie Page. Zach Sang Show. Catch the Zach Sang Show weeknights 7 to midnight. And Kelly Fox weekends on your home for hit music. The Q102.9. And 104.9 in Prescott and Cottonwood. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Lee, this is Agent Williams from the tax office. Our records show an unpaid balance on your account. If you don't pay by end of day, you'll be facing jail time. Well, the fastest way to fix this is with a prepaid debit card. Can you go get one now? Yes, and we want to clear this up. If you just buy that prepaid card, put $400 on it, then call me back and read the numbers to me. The moment they ask for a prepaid card is the moment you know something's wrong. Think before you send money. Learn more at scamawareness.org. And welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. We are now here to talk about Corn Fest. <laughs> <laughs> the Hauser and Hauser Sweet Corn is in. I know, I'm, I'm a freak. This stuff <laughs> is amazing. I'm salivating. Sorry, my voice is going to get really funny here because I'm like, ah, corn. <laughs> but it's amazing because it's the 26th annual yes. Corn Fest, ladies. We have Nikki Miller and Julie Scott with us. Thank you so much for being here for and bringing yes. corn. I love it. Corn in the studio. <laughs> 
I just, we can get corny now. Uh, there you <laughs> <laughs> well, Nikki, tell us all about this year's Corn Fest. Well, it's basically the same as we've had in the past. We're going to have the vendors and the beer garden, and we're going to have a shuttle as we did last mm -hmm. year from 12 to 8 from the Alco parking lot at, by Bashes so that people don't have to worry about parking. The Verde Valley Archaeological Center will be open as usual, and the Historical Museum will be open, as, so, and the jail is going to be open. They're going to have a blacksmithing uh, thing there this year, so cool. that'll be cool. And uh, Fort Verde is going to do their vintage baseball game, and uh, they have a new thing. As, as usual, we do our placemats that we put out, Beautiful. and um, we always have an issue because something always gets changed. So <laughs> Fort Verde uh, has changed something, so I was going to update that for you. Um, they had that they were going to do an, an ancient native technology display mm. and, and presentation, and the gentleman uh, is not able to do so. So they have had a change, and they are going to be doing a performance that is based on the best-selling book called Vanished Arizona, mm. and it's portraying Martha and Jack Summerhays and he was an officer at the fort and so it's a diary from her Ooh. as the officer's wife and that's going to be at one o'clock on Saturday at the museum in at the fort so that'll Wonderful. be really good yeah and so the other new thing this year is and I'm excited about it because last year I about had a heat stroke because it was so hot last year <laughs> yeah, and bad. and Julie Julie was there squirting everybody <laughs> with power squirters Aww, so water we guns were, uh, we had fun <laughs> <laughs> I literally had people coming to me can you spray me off <laughs> oh, it was terrible last year, yeah. and uh, but we have a slip and slide this year, oh, and it's coming from uh, Freedom Station, and so we're going to have it's going to cost five dollars. Mm -hmm. It's an all day thing, so mm -hmm. you're going to get a bracelet so that you can go slip and slide when you get hot. You can go cool yeah. off. Nice. And they also on this bracelet are going to give them a discount so that they can go to Freedom Station between now and the end of August and get uh, a discount on, or they can actually get a Ooh. free attraction there. Ooh. So it's going to be a plus for the kids that want to go play uh, laser tag and miniature yeah. golf and Very all those cool. things. So that's Very really cool. neat. So, And we're going to have the cornhole competition, providing mm -hmm. it doesn't rain. Or we have, I, like, like I said, last year was so hot, I, yeah. I went home sick from just oh. about heat stroke. Oh, and uh, I've complained about the rain all these years. And so mm -hmm. now God was teaching me that <laughs> heat's yes. worse. Yeah, you know? there you go. So I'm wearing my umbrella today <laughs> just in case. Oh, <laughs> yay, come on, monsoon. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically it's going to be the same. We're going to mm -hmm. have the kids games. We're going to probably do more water games. Uh, we do have the, the sack races and we have the bubble, bu bubble gum blowing contest nice. and stuff like that. But we do have a water toss, a water balloon toss, which everybody seems to enjoy, mm -hmm. and the water balloon volleyball, which has turned out to be something that everybody oh. is uh, finding it challenging, but it yeah, is fun. I'll so. say. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then Julie's going to talk to us. One mm -hmm. of the problems that we seem to have have is yeah. pets, the, yes. the issues on the pets, and um, because people bring their pets and we don't want pets there because mm -hmm. there are people that are afraid of dogs right. and there are people that, um, you know, the, the dogs It's Julie just not the appropriate venue to have a pet at. Sure. Um, sure. Corn Fest is, you know, for family, fun, friends. People ha need to understand that there are some people out there, adults and children alike, who have fears yeah. of dogs. Um, last year we had a pretty bad dog fight between two dogs that came in oh even after we'd already asked them to you know please take your animals and do something with them. Mm. We also had um, staff that found a dog that was in a car. The windows <gasps> were put down a little bit oh but no. it was 115 degrees out there so oh no. the volunteers are trying to find the owner, give the dog water. Um, we do have though one of our local businesses, um, Hillside Canine Resort and Spa, mm -hmm. um, is offering that you can bring your pet to them as a service. It's $16 for the day. Mm. Um, they are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, it's an extra $10 fee if you guys want to party um, until 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. um, you know they're more than happy to help you. All you need to provide is either a certificate showing your pet's um, Vaccination. vaccinations or the vet's number that they take their animal to and All they right. will gladly take them for the day in a safe certified place mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, they're great in our community. They're just great. off of industrial. That's a perfect service to yes, offer so that exactly. you can enjoy Corn Fest and yet your furry critters will also enjoy their day at the spa. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you do Julie. Um, I'm the Vice President of Camp Verde Promotions where 
a um, Camp Pretty Business Alliance. Or excuse me, sorry, Camp Pretty <laughs> Business Alliance. Did you get a raise? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm on the board no. of Camp Pretty Promotions well, too. Go. So <laughs> I've been doing a lot lately with both. Mm -hmm. um, and it's we're hot, a fledgling so. organization. Um, so far we have about 45 members. Mm -hmm. um, we're very excited. Um, kind of takes the place of the chamber since, you know, the chamber is kind of defunct right mm -hmm. now. Um, and we're excited um, to do things for the businesses in the community. Um, we do offer light classes. Uh, July 19th, we're going to have a social media class that we're hosting um, that Local First Arizona is going to be putting on at our local library. All right. um, so we're excited about that. Um, just doing what we can to support the businesses. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. I know that the businesses appreciate it. That's, yeah. that's pretty good uh, membership number there, over 40. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Ah, well, you know, Camp Verde is, you know, as in the many years I've been in the area, you know, it's just up and coming and coming and more and more and more and a destination, making Camp Verde a destination, you know, exactly. special events like Corn Fest, yes. you know, <laughs> and other things. It's just fantastic. <laughs> well, and there'll be another, the crafter fair will be going on in the gym. Yeah. And so um, the if it rains, they're going to be safe and sound there in go. there. So and air conditioned. Yeah, in air conditioned, and mm -hmm. so that, that will be good. So uh, we're hoping for a little bit of moisture, but yeah. not a lot of moisture. We right. don't want to wade around in two or three inches of water. Right. Yeah. Mm, goodness. <laughs> but you know, there's a beer garden, so it won't matter anyway, right? That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. <laughs> Ah, so what? It's raining. Go have another beer. That's okay. It's, it's all good. We're not going to melt. Let's drink yeah, beer. No, <laughs> plenty of food, plenty of beer, a little air conditioning if you need it at the craft. Yeah, that's true. Of course, that's lots true. of corn, buttered yep. corn, roasted yeah, corn, roasted every corn. corn. Oh, my God. It's and amazing. volunteers. We still you need volunteers. volunteers. Okay. Um, for Corn Fest, we need at least 110 volunteers to function. Wow. Um, so far, we have only 50. We're still wow. in the process of calling our regulars that um, step up every year. Um, so if anybody is willing, um, you can call Camp Verde Promotions or go to the web website, campverdepromotions.org, mm -hmm. yep. and sign up online. It's painless, and it would help support these ongoing heritage events. Absolutely. Very yes. important. I know volunteers are a huge part yes, of any right, event, right. and needing volunteers is like, out. Well, it takes 80 volunteers just to do the corn tent because it's so hot that we try to do two-hour shifts. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for you people that might want to volunteer, it's going to be, we have a big fan, and we have misters, and so we try to make it as, as enjoyable as possible, but we do just do two-hour shifts because it's just too hot. And Understood. we have a lot of people that will do two hours one time and then go rest and then come back and do another shift Mm -hmm. and so we appreciate that greatly yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but we do need them so we okay. would appreciate help <laughs> campverdepromotions.org campverdepromotions.org is where you want to go if you want to volunteer if you need some information corn fest is coming up da, 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 the 26th annual july 14th and 15th so on friday it starts at three mm -hmm. goes until 10 and on saturday it's from 10 until 10. yes, yes. weather Excellent. permitting mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, go. well just go in the craft fair there, there you go <laughs> <laughs> and wait, you know, it's a, it's only going to last five minutes anyway. That, so. that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll feel much better for it. So. Yes, yes. That's wonderful. So. Nikki, thank you so much. How long have you been involved now? Out of, I know you haven't been around for all 26. Oh, no, 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 no. This is my eighth year annual, and it, it's I'm feeling eight years oh, of this. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for keeping going. Yeah, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Julie, thank you for what you're doing with the Business yeah. Association. Really appreciate both of you. Well, thank, so thank you. Thank you for being here. And we'll be right back, so don't go away. The Q102.9 plays all the hits. Yo, what's going on? This is Trissy Dre. Ariana Grande. I'm Maroon 5. This is Rihanna. I'm Mateo. I'm Joe Mendez. Hey, it's Bruno Mars. Ed Sheeran. What's up, guys? It's Justin Bieber. You're listening to The Weeknd. Start your day with Brian James in the morning. You'll get at least 10 songs in a row during your ride home with Julie Payne. Zach Sang Show. Catch The Zach Sang Show weeknights 7 to midnight. And Kelly Fox weekends on your home for hit music. The Q102.9 and 104.9 in Prescott and Cottonwood. Papa. Miss <laughs> 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 Lee, this is Agent Williams from the tax office. Our records show an unpaid balance on your account. If you don't pay by end of day, you'll be facing jail time. Well, the fastest way to fix this is with a prepaid debit card. Can you go get one now? Yes, and we want to clear this up. If you just buy that prepaid card, 
put $400 on it, then call me back and read the numbers to me. The moment they ask for a prepaid card is the moment you know something's wrong. Think before you send money. Learn more at scamawareness.org. Valley experience. We're now here at Tuzagut National Monument, standing here with Zach Crisija, who is an experimental archaeologist and owner of Echoes from the Past. Thank you for meeting with us today, Zach. Thank really you very much. And this setup that you have for us is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why we're here with Zach is because he's doing presentations every third Saturday of the month here at Tuzagut National Monument. Coming up on July 15th, we're talking textiles, correct? Yes, cotton textiles. Mm -hmm. This is a very interesting display. You, you've got it starting from the, the cotton, what are these? these are that's a cotton bowl, bowl not a ball right. bowl. Mm -hmm. and, and this is straight from the plant? Yes, that's Hopi cotton. That's a heritage plant that uh, the Hopi still grow today and uh, the descendant of the cotton that the folks at Tuzugu most likely would have oh, been growing. And that still has the seeds in it, so that mm -hmm. needs to be ginned mm -hmm. and carted. And then that's essentially just removing seeds and straightening the fibers because mm -hmm. that's just kind of all in a mess. You have to orient right. them in, in, in a single axis uh -huh. to facilitate the spinning process right. into yarn, which then can be woven into garments, bags, and utilitarian objects. Wow. So it, it's a long process, is what you're saying? Most definitely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, if you sat at a table and you started out with your cotton balls, how long does it take you to get to the yarn stage? To get to yarn, um, I mean, a, an individual cotton ball will produce, uh, depending on the diameter of the yarn, but I'd be able to make enough string to maybe make a um, section for a bracelet or a necklace, wow. but generally we're working uh, in mass production because we're mm -hmm. trying to make enough yarn to be dyed and made into certain right. objects like that knife sheath and, mm -hmm. and the uh, carrying strap that's currently in production. Oh, so that's a carrying strap. Very cool. And I love how you're going to weave that with the, with the sticks. Yes. Using the sticks. So essentially that's just the warps, or uh, yucca warps are the vertical elements mm -hmm. in a textile. Uh, they are separated between two pegs approximately two feet apart. Those loops will then be tied to a string which will in turn be tied to something like a pack basket or a bundle mm. of wood or something. And with dyed cotton, in that case that's a, a brown dyed from mm -hmm. uh, the black walnut husks oh. that grow in the Verde Valley. Mm -hmm. And that red is a uh, mineral pigment actually, it's red ochre, which is oh. a mineral that can be found throughout the Verde Valley. That's great. And I'm doing a tapestry design. Oh, so very nice. And I love the sandals that you've woven here. And you've made Thank everything you. on this table. Yes, correct? with we one have exception, to give you props I have that. made all of this stuff, yes. Mm -hmm. And these are, are great fun. These actually look really comfortable. <laughs> yes, and, and these are uh, relatively similar to actually the pair of sandals that are right behind us in this right. collection. So with the curved heel and all that is is just some fiber, uh, four individual strands forming, mm -hmm. again, the warps, which are the, the vertical elements, and then unprocessed, or um, sorry, minimally processed mm -hmm. yucca fiber mm -hmm. forming the weft, forming the weave. Interesting. How much that looks like horse hair? That's kind of... Yeah, it resembles it. So yeah, the yucca plant, you know, we're used to, it looks like a, a, a bayonet. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly common plant. Mm -hmm. um, it is full of these fibers. And mm -hmm. this represents maybe two plants worth of fiber. Wow. So next to cotton, it was a very important fiber used for textiles, mm -hmm. nets, bags. Neat. Sandals, of course, and, and even in some cases, archery strings. Oh, yes. See, in the next um, presentation that you're going to be doing on August 19th. 19th is arrowhead construction and arrow construction, yes. correct? Yes, I will be making um, Sinawa replica arrows. So in this part of the Southwest, during this part of, uh, during this part of prehistory, the arrows were compound. They're made out of a reed main shaft. Mm -hmm. This kind of reed grows throughout the Verde Valley. Um, hardwood fore shafts sometimes tipped with a projectile point for a large game, and um, feathers, fletching, to make the arrow fly straight. Sure. And in some cases, they're decorated with paint and scratching. So I Indeed. will be demonstrating making arrows. I'll have essentially all of the elements uh, that compose an arrow hmm. laid out, and I will put them together uh, wow. for the public to see. Well, that is amazing, because there's an art to it. I mean, if you... It's not going to fly straight. Most definitely, <laughs> don't yes. Do it right. Arrows require uh, um, serious consideration because, like you said, if it's not straight, 
you're missing your target and you're going home and hungry. And then you're going to be hungry. <laughs> Absolutely. And another one of your specialties, I love this, is jewelry making. Yes, that is my primary Because the ancient specialty. technology of making jewelry was a little different than what we do right now. Certainly. It, it was a very, um, very refined in, in this part of the Southwest. People here were elaborately adorned in both mm. beautiful garments and beautiful jewelry. So at Tuzagut in particular, we have bead specialization where people were taking a uh, argillite, which is a relatively soft stone located not far from here, uh, just north of Prescott actually. We presume that this material was coming down the Verde River to the Tuzagut area and bead specialists here were creating beads by probably by the thousands. We have mm. a cache, which uh, here is a replica of it, of mm -hmm. approximately 700 bead blanks on display here. Wow. And then from this stage, which is an intermediary stage, the beads were drilled and shaped to uh, very small discs as yeah, my those are necklace tiny. Reflects. I don't even how you managed to do that. These, and your bracelet too is very thank cool. You. Yes, this is a, a bracelet made from a whole glycimerous shell, which is a <laughs> shell from the Sea of Cortez, uh, which was imported to the southwest from the south. And this is a, a fairly ubiquitous ornament type. This was very mm -hmm. common. Many folks who lived at Tuzagut at the time were wearing these. Yeah, I can see that. That is amazing Thank you. that you do all this yourself and that it everything looks absolutely historically accurate. Thank you. I do my best to yeah. follow the not only the raw materials, but also the production techniques that are outlined in the archaeological record. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I can tell. You enjoy sharing your information. Yes, I do. Thus, the presentations on the third Saturday of the month happening at Tuzagut National Monument. So we have July 15th. We're going to be talking about textiles. Yes. And demonstrations of weaving and taking the raw cotton and turning to yarn. And, yes. and then, of course, all the cool things that you've made. And then on August... 19th? 19th, yes. <laughs> I got it right. It's going to be uh, arrow, arrow making, making demonstration. and very cool. And you're going to, are you going to do one about jewelry making? Yes. Um, I had a bead making demonstration earlier this month. I will also be doing shell ornament production. Mm. Um, I will potentially be making a bracelet. I will be doing uh, mosaic inlays, which is using little pieces of turquoise, mm. inlaying it in certain ornament pieces to embellish them even further. Wow. And Tuzgut actually harbors a lot of mosaic pieces relative yeah. to its size. Yeah. I'll be doing flint napping, which is the production of uh, stone tools. And um, I will be doing a yucca fiber workshop as oh, well, uh, or demonstration rather, showing how um, these wild fibers were converted into textiles as well. Fantastic. Busy man here. Yes, I try to stay busy. <laughs> Zach Rasija. Now check him out. You can um, check out echoesfromthepast.school.com. That's yes. a website for you. Of course, you can go to Tuzagut National Monument website there if you want to see the schedule of the um, events that are going on and the presentations that Zach's going to be doing. Make sure you check that out. Zach, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having Excellent. me. I appreciate it. And we'll be right back with more of the Verde Valley experience, so don't go away. Place all the hits. Yo, what's going on? This is Trissy Drake. Ariana Grande. I'm Maroon 5. This is Rihanna. I'm Mateo. I'm Joe Mendez. Hey, it's Bruno Mars. Ed Sheeran. What's up, guys? It's Justin Bieber. You're listening to The Weeknd. Start your day with Brian James in the morning. You'll get at least 10 songs in a row during your ride home with Julie Page. Zach Sang Show. Catch the Zach Sang Show weeknights 7 to midnight. And Kelly Fox weekends on your home for hit music. The Q102.9. And 104.9 in Prescott and Cottonwood. Orkin has pest control down to a science. When your business chooses Orkin's Precision Protection Program, you get a tailored pest control program for your specific industry and environment. Your business can benefit from over a century of experience, training and scientific knowledge that define the Orkin man. Maximum protection, minimum exposure, backed by one of the industry's most comprehensive guarantees. Choose your locally owned and operated Northern Arizona Orkin and get more than an exterminator. Get an expert.
Well, it's blues on the bayou, blues on the bayou, blues on the bayou where the gators dwell. And it's blues in the desert, blues in the desert, blues in the desert where it's dry as hell. Well, it's blues on the ocean, blues on the ocean, blues on the ocean where the waves roar and swell. And there's blues in the mountains, blues in the mountains, blues in the mountains where the spirits dwell. There's blues all around my head. Blues crawling all around my bed Where's blues in the alley, man And blues in the house where I live With a red old train, red old train Chugging through the pouring rain Taste of whiskey to ease the pain Riding on that red old train There's a crazy old preacher up in them hills. Crazy old preacher up in them hills. Lives up rabbit and homemade swill. The crazy old preacher up in them hills. But I seen Jack and I seen Jill. They dumb been up on that hill. Found God, so they say. Smoking meds keep the blues away. And I hear that whistle, whistle blow All the way from Jericho That old train's chugging on Chugging out some long, long song Blues all around my head Blues crawling all around my bed Where's blues in the alley, man And blues in the house where I live All around my head Blues crawling all around my bed Where there's blues in the alley, man And blues in the house where I live I love that. I'm over there tapping my foot. I can't help myself. <laughs> Don, that was awesome. Don, what's your everyone? Playing a very cool instrument. Please tell us about your instrument. I call this the Voodoo Caster, and this uh, just started out as a cigar box guitar. Uh, I found this neck at a, at a, on eBay for just you know, a few <laughs> bucks. Carved it out, you know, cut old pieces of old guitars off to make uh, necks and guitar parts and put it all together. and. <laughs> The sound is amazing, and it really, I, you probably can't see it in detail, but it is so cool. It's just a cigar box with, with the devil on it, the tiki devil, <laughs> the tiki and then devil, you've got yeah. the, the pirate skull. Yerg. That's That's all you right there. That is you <laughs> yes. in an instrument. Coolness all shoved together. So I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed. I absolutely love your music. Well, thank I you. I love the blues and, and finding really good Yummy Blues in the Verde Valley is so exciting. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you play a lot. You play all over the valley. Yeah, yep. You really do. Yeah, You've I've got a bunch a of things lately. coming up. We did some stuff in Flagstaff mm -hmm. recently. Uh, a lot of stuff in Prescott coming up mm -hmm. and some stuff here in the in Cotton. Yeah. So. Check out DonWitcher.com. DonWitcher.com. He's got a thank you beautiful list of where he's playing, when, and what day. And that's <laughs> really important as an artist to have those things. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to since we had you on? Uh, well, let's see. We, uh, we, I, I talked about we won the blues competition. Uh, uh, my band and I get to go to Memphis uh, mm -hmm. to to, to uh, compete there. You know, representing Northern Arizona. Uh, so we get to do some traveling and stuff, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, besides doing a lot of gigs, uh, I spend my time at the river with my dog and my gal. So, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> sweet. Gigging and hanging at the river. Right, Life does not get better than that. that. <laughs> it absolutely doesn't. You're still writing songs. Oh yes. Did you write that one? I did indeed. Yep. All right. It was great. Yep. Well, thank you. That's a great, I just, you know, really awesome. It's a hillbilly, hillbilly swamp. Hillbilly. Yeah. I know. Or we, swamp of billy. Mentioned swamp of billy. Yeah. Now, please describe <laughs> swamp of billy. Well, I was, you know, one of the things uh, is I was always into the um, alt country scene for a long time. Yeah. And, of course, I love blue 
bluegrass and the old hillbilly music, so I like to take and kind of mix it together with uh, the blues and stuff that we do now, and I kind of call it a you know swampabilly sound because it's got a almost almost a rockabilly, but mm -hmm. at the same time you get that real swampy groove in there. Right, and of course, Gator in the lyrics helps yeah. too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It does indeed. <laughs> that is true. Now you've got a lot going on. You've got your solo career. Yep. You have a duo. Yes. And you also have a larger group. Yeah, we have a full band. And I've got some other projects going on, like with August West. You just met mm -hmm. with August recently. Yeah. We've been uh, starting a project. We'll probably be doing some gigs together pretty soon. And uh, my friend Christian Michael Berry up in Prescott, we've got the Electric Swamp Poets duo and the Electric Swamp Poets band, full band. We'll be at a Yavapai Casino tomorrow night mm -hmm. uh, from 7 to 11, I think. Something like wow, that. Yeah. cool. The Electric Swamp Poets. Yes. Very, very yep. cool. That's cool. Which is a, a name Chris came up with. And uh, we put out a new album recently, which was nominated for uh, Best Blues Album of the Year at the IBC in, in Memphis. Uh, of course, it didn't win, but it was nominated. Hey, so that's, that's always huge. cool. You, know, you can't beat that, you know. No. And, uh, you know, being able to go there and play on Beale Street was great. Mm. You know, we had a great time. It's some great musicians. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, unbelievable. How can there not be in Memphis? Yeah, I mean, getting exactly. the honor to go to Memphis is just <laughs> amazing. So yes. congratulations on Thank that. Yes. That's a, a wonderful honor. It was awesome. That I do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That just has to really rejuvenate you as a blues artist. It, yes, it, being it, on Beale Street in Memphis. Oh yeah, and all just the history and those old buildings that got all up and down that street are just great. And uh, mm. just every single bar, I mean, across each other, it's just bands all up and down the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's wonderful. That's great. Yeah. What inspired you to make this? Well, piece you know, of equipment. I was at a gig playing uh, with my friend Chris, and I had a guy that came up that had an electric cigar box guitar, and he mm -hmm. asked me to play it for him. Hmm. And uh, I said, sure. So he filmed it, and he gave it to me at the end. Wow. So I was like, well, this thing's kind of cool. Now, it was unfretted. You couldn't finger it. You just played slide on it. But I was oh. like, wouldn't it be cool to build a fretted one? Oh, and wow. so I, I took and I just put this one together. And, wow. and uh, they're very cool instruments, actually. Oh, that's great. Yeah. How long have you been playing that one? Uh, this one, I've only maybe a month now or so. Wow, I think I've had, freshness. Yeah. I yeah. love it. <laughs> on the PBE, freshness. And you said you're going to play a song for us that you haven't. Yes, I just play. wrote a brand new song. And uh, it has never been heard by anybody yet. Yeah. Right here, you're yeah. going to hear it first on the Purdy Valley Experience. Oh my gosh. What's this one called? Uh, this new song is called Some Old Highway. Oh, excellent. And again, another guitar. This one's yes. also this one handmade. I got, this was handmade. It came out of an estate sale, actually. Wow. And uh, I got it for very cheap. I think I paid 75 bucks for this thing. Wow. And I just I just love it. It's a great, you know, really just pretty tone. That's very pretty. See, that shows you it's not so much the equipment that you're working with, but the talent that's behind it. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, you know, you make a cigar box sound awesome, and this sounds amazing. It could have been somebody's, you know, dining room table at one point, and now it sounds amazing. And it does, yeah. And it does, for sure. Where do you get your inspiration when you write songs? Uh, you know, it's all different because... I don't feel like I have to write for any certain genre, you know, mm -hmm. like I never feel like, okay, I'm just in the blues, you gotta write blues. I just let whatever comes, come mm. out, come out. Nice. You know, so it could be Hillbilly Swamp like this, or this next song is, I, I consider more Americana, kinda, you know, countryish kinda sound in a way. So I just let whatever flow come out and just wow. go from there. That's great. And it happens all the time. I think I've probably written about a thousand songs or so. Wow, yeah, wow. Any songs. new albums on the horizon? Uh, hopefully we'll be having a new full band album come out pretty soon, I think within the next few months. And then I'm looking at doing another solo album myself of, uh, with a few local musicians like D.L. Harrison and a few other people that will be stepping in and helping with some of the other instruments. And great. Yeah, so be great. Good. Well, good yeah. luck with that. I well, can't wait you. to hear it. Well, now, check out donwitcher.com. Donwitcher.com. You really want to go there and check this man out. Of course, I love how you can go and listen to all the songs. There's lots of great songs There's connected on there. Every song is a winner. Love it all. There's a great YouTube yeah. channel, which has, yes. I think, 29 videos on it right yes. now. Yes. So. Fabulous. Good work. Your well, PR person is doing really a good job. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> So you're going to play a little uh, original song yep. never been played before. Never this been is played so before. exciting. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for it's having me. It's such a really, pleasure really and an honor to have it. you. It's it's I like really this, love it. Oh, we're so fortunate to have <laughs> such a caliber of musicians around here. Thank That's you That's what I love about much. the Birdie Valley. It's yeah. incredible. The amount of musicians that are talented is just blows me away for this yeah. whole area. It's just amazing. Absolutely. You know? It's a great thing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for watching the Birdie Valley Experience. As always, we really appreciate you. Check out BirdieValleyTV.com. Check us out on YouTube. Like us on our Facebook page. And look Don up. Absolutely. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>
slowly creeping Crawling across my kitchen floor I've been up all night drinking Writing songs On dreaming, dreaming big of cold When will I get a break, Lord, without a shovel? Bed deep like old times before. Made a zeal, old life seems like a shuffle. Just like a song, the shadows creeping, crawls my floor. Just a little luck, Lord, could cover my house. Dark highways and old back roads. Oh, playing the same old, same old ballroom. It's sure, sure, sure getting Take me back, Lord, to those times. Oh, life, life went on and on. Oh, before the years fill the mind. With another, another lost highway song. Now when it breaks, Lord, where will I be? Another soul strip bed sea. Just put me on a highway that ain't the same Where well, some old highway Some old highway love can be my grave 